Hello and welcome back to the Weird and Proud Podcast. It's Sam Ram and James. James. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hope you had a great week. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna come right out. I'm gonna say it. I'm on drugs today. Lots of them. <laughs> Lots of drugs. There's a lot of different drugs swimming around in there. And guess what? You all will be the beneficiaries yeah. of said situation. Yeah. Um, basically, here's the story, okay? And I wish, honestly, it was better. I wish I had a better story. But I pulled a muscle in my neck. And I wish the story was that, like, I was running in the road trying to save a baby bunny. And, you know, I got, I wrestled. There was a, a you know, a animal control wrangler. And we fought to the death and I killed him. <laughs> do we want to do we want to do the Michael Bay '90s uh, blockbuster summer blockbuster yes, release version blockbuster of version. your story? Yeah, me saving a baby bunny based on a true story. Based on a true story. Should we start with the true story and then we can add that in the, the fluff? Story. Ever? That's right. <laughs> what do you mean? That did happen today. Drugs. So um, many drugs. And then I got drugs. Um. No. So basically. Here's a fun thing about getting older is that you do nothing and your body betrays you. And it's kind of cool. Um, but no, I really, you know, I've been doing a lot of physical movement. Like, I feel like I've been working out really hard Thursday and Friday, moving a lot of stuff around the house. And I woke up Saturday morning. And like, again, this is where I wish that this was a better story. But I woke up and I just had the worst pain in my neck. And I was like, well, maybe I just you know, slept on it wrong. And, you know, I have, or I have a knot from like working out and lifting stuff. So I was stretching and like trying to, you know, use, I have like one of the little hypervolt Theragun things and I was massaging in it. And all of a sudden, like, I, like it, it was kind of a gradual, but like I was doing it in one area. And at first I was like, you know, cause a lot of the times too, with like massage and these guns, it's like where it really hurts is where you need to go harder. No. <laughs> you Jesus. Know? So I was like, really like I was on like high level in like my neck. And afterwards I was like, I think I just actually broke my own neck. It, then I really <laughs> could not turn it at all to the side. And it hurt to like walk, like to make any sudden movements. It hurt my neck. Like, honestly, like, if I just like stood up like completely straight, even then I would still have this dull pain in my neck. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to, I, uh, you know, we put some heat on it and then I was icing it, took some ibuprofen and I was like, maybe it'll just get better tomorrow. And then I woke up Sunday today and I was like, um, it is not feeling better. And literally the entire time throughout the night, anytime I would have to like lift my head to move it like on the pillow or like reposition myself. I would wake up because I would feel like like a stabbing pain in the side of my neck. So I didn't really sleep that great going like in and out a million times of sleep. And I was, you know, when we were on the couch. I was like, honestly, it has not gotten better. I don't feel like it got worse, but it just, it was not getting any better. And it, I mean, like I feel for people who have chronic pain because it's like when you have like a pain like that, especially like your back or your neck, it's like, you can't do anything without feeling that pain. And it's just, you can't focus. Like I couldn't concentrate on anything else. Like I just could feel this like aching pain in my neck. So I, I was, I felt totally neglected. Yeah. James. She wasn't paying attention to me. <laughs> James wasn't getting enough attention. Um, so I was like, all right, let's just go to urgent care. And you know, I, at least if I can just get some like muscle relaxers, cause my neck just felt like it was spasming. So, we go to an urgent care. We walk in. It's a Sunday, you know, and not going to name the urgent care, but it was an urgent care. And we go in, the nurse is like taking my symptoms down and, you know, ask me what medications I'm on. And she's like, all right, I'm going to bring the doctor. And the doctor comes in. She's like doing the exam and she's just like, all right, I think you have I mean, it's basically like stiff neck. Like I forget what like the medical name of it. It was like trilom, trilomy, triliac or something. I Trilonic couldn't remember. Or something. And I... But it's basically like, like, like a pulled muscle in your neck. 
Um, obviously they don't like, you know, this is again, an urgent care doctor, (laughs) not that urgent care doctors aren't great, but like, she's not like an orthopedic, you know, like she, this isn't like her main gig. So she's like, all right, well, I'm going to give you a couple, a couple shots. Like there are a couple things we can do. Normally I would do steroids and then, um, like a muscle relaxer that I can give you orally. And then we can also do a shot of like, basically a really strong ibuprofen and i forget the name of that one too it was, uh, i didn't take yeah name, but like so. it's not like an opioid like it, it doesn't have addictive properties it just is like a really strong ibuprofen which i was taking ibuprofen all day yesterday and i feel like it did nothing so she's like all right one of these like kind of hurts though like it kind of burns and so she does the first one and i was like even that one kind of was like woo, okay and then i think it was the pain one that she was like this was one's gonna one. burn yep and so she puts it in and you know it burned that's like one of the first shots i've had that i was like "Ooh, that one hurts that one hurts i feel like i've had a lot of shots in my life but that one that one yeah you could feel it and all of a sudden i started to feel really lightheaded and like you know it was just like the spots you start to see the stars a little bit and anytime like i've heard that you're gonna pass out is like to have something sugary so i remember i tried to like go to grab for my coffee and that's the last thing i remember and then i just woke up literally i you know lying back obviously thank god i was already like on the bed thingy um but they basically were like oh are you have this happened before and i was like no not really and they were like taking my you know they did take my blood pressure again took my blood levels they took your blood sugar blood sugar um and that was fine so i just needed to like lie down but yeah james was like and then and then, and then she was like all right um well, I guess I didn't see, I was like half in and out, but she was like, I guess I didn't see that you were on this daily medication. Like we should probably change what medication I'm giving you. This is when James got upset. Yeah. And I kept my mouth shut. Though. Yeah. And so James was in the car and he was like, you know, finally when we left, you know, and I still was like pretty out of it. I was like sweating, but then I was like shaking. I literally, I've never had that happen like that. Have you ever passed out? Like just fainted like that? before i don't think i've ever been with you when you've done it i don't know I, I can't think of a time no i Recently. can't think of anything ever i was trying to think I, was like, I know i've passed out before but i was trying to remember when i have the only other time that i've passed out is when i got surgery so this was in college or maybe it was like right after college. Um, but I had, I have receding gum line on my bottom teeth. I think I told you about this. You told me about this. Yep. I know this. Story. And this was like before, apparently now there's like basically this like fake gum line that you can just put right over your teeth now. Is that a cat? That's why is a cat crying? There's a cat crying. Hey, sorry. There's just cats in the background. Um, so, but back then this was the only thing you could do is they literally cut a square of the of the skin on the roof of your mouth and then sew it onto your gum line and when i tell you it was i have like a hair in my eye. um it was one of the most painful things i remember you telling me about that um but so it's like the most painful surgery you're not allowed to be completely asleep like they basically have you like put put like the lidocaine shots in the roof of your mouth and on your gums but you can still feel everything anyway sorry if you're like eating um but it was so painful and i went home and i was looking in the mirror and was like looking at the gums and they it just it was so bloody and gross that i passed out in the bathroom ah uh, yeah i remember you telling me that um so that was like the only other time i passed out was like and i do like if i get like see a lot of blood or like see like see that something, something graphic I've been around enough that yeah it doesn't, doesn't bother ever you. bother me nope. yeah um so anyway so i basically yeah like almost died at an urgent care today but they did give me the good stuff and finally like you know and i was saying about like people with chronic pain are like you know i always think of dope sick constantly uh, whenever like i'm like a doctor now and it's just like yeah like it it's like, you know, you would do anything for, like, the pain to go away. And then, like, once you have, like, the pain relief, it's like, oh, my God. 
the best feeling ever. Like finally I could like rest my head down and it's definitely still dull and I can't really like move it all the way. I don't have the same mobility, but finally a little bit of relief, which was, which is amazing. So dare had it all wrong. Do the drugs. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't do drugs. But if you really need them, then do them. Right, James? Absolutely. No, James is very anti-drugs. Well, this was very, I thought this was a, uh, this is applicable. Yeah. Um, it, I've had to use painkillers in my past when I had a big injury, yep. right? It helps, if it, especially if it helps you sleep. That's yeah. super important. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's more extremely of a important. And just like being able to rest it. Like, again, like I feel like when it's constantly spasming, it's like it's the muscle can't relax. Yeah. You know? And I feel like I was like, ugh. But James, I don't think I've ever even seen you like take an ibuprofen or like a Tylenol or I don't. like anything. No need for James, me. James, and again, still has made a doctor's appointment. Nope. <laughs> I'll get there. I will get. I will get there. We'll get the vitals checked. Yes. Every See, you twenty just years. Never know. You just never. Yeah. Know. No, that's a good thing that I'm not saying it's a bad thing. James is anti the man. Not at all. I thought it, I was. I rushed us there today. I know you did. That was the fastest I've ever seen you drive. Oh, I was, and I almost got you us almost in an like accident. Literally killed us. Like it did almost kill times. us, but you know we got there safe. Made my neck like even more breaking with like the <laughs> stop and start of it all. But no, it's all good. So, and I really do feel I'm starting to feel better. A little bit of hope. You we know? left. We left the house so abruptly. I forgot my phone. And you forgot your phone. I know. How do you live? Um, but anyways, we had a great show for you. Just figured I would give you the down low on what's going on in our world. Um, we have a weird news, but I feel like everyone and their mother knows about this. We just have to talk about it. And also, of course, we have some weird secrets. So it's going to be a great show. Um, was the painkillers? Was that a precursor to the show recommendation of the week? Oh, well, I think we've talked about it before. Dope sick. And if you haven't seen dope sick, not that what just you're talking dope about? sick. No, no, no. What's the uh, there was another one you were watching about the little girl who has, <gasps> I thought that was going to be your exactly, recommendation. It is. Did I roll it? That was, well, you were foreshadowing, basically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I had that written down. And then um, I couldn't remember if we had talked about shiny, happy people, too. I was going to talk about that, which I didn't watch with you. This is one I'd watched. It was like a quick one about the Duggar family. But anyways, James, we're jumping ahead. Actually, let's just talk about the TV stuff since we're there anyways. Um, <laughs> no, let's go in order. What's the order? Well, I was going to say the weird news story. Let's which... do the weird news story. Okay, we're this is this is like my brain right now jumping around. But the weird news story, which again isn't something that I feel like is a secret anymore, but the submarine of it all. So many thoughts. And I feel like everyone has been talking about this. I feel like it's on every podcast. So I'm not gonna go into full detail. You've probably there's a ninety nine percent chance you've already heard about this. But um the submersible that was going to see the Titanic that ended up that it did implode and all passengers passed away. The one thing I did want to say, you know, and obviously it is very sad. Again, there's still lives being lost. It's still, there's a 19 year old kid that was on board that it sounds like he didn't really want to go. Um, but it's always sad when people pass away unexpectedly and no matter if they're billionaires or whatever, everyone deserves life. But fuck around and find out, you know? And I feel like and me and James have been talking about this. I think I was talking about this a little on Instagram, too. But when you, like, mess with, like, a graveyard of people, like, I was telling James, my perspective is it's, like, you're basically going down to a grave site and, like, you know, I don't know how much like they do on the site itself, whether they're going through things and kind of choosing, you know, things to bring back. But the that's where a thousand five hundred people died in on that site. So it's like you don't think the dark energy and like the people down there, those souls that were lost down there aren't like, OK, yeah, great. Like use our death as entertainment. Which I know is kind of hypocritical because I do love murder shows and I'm <laughs> I do love true crime, <laughs> but more like going and visiting. Like I like it from afar. Like I'm not going to grave sites and like going and 
getting my hands, you know, in people's business. But when it comes to like, you know, for entertainment, just because you have X amount of money to go down and like look at, you know, it's like, what did they get anything educational out of it? Like, is there anything that moved forward science that's on this what, trip? Is that's what we hope. Like, that's what I told you. My one, yeah. the internet, even though we both are lives revolve around the internet whether that's jobs and what we do right but it's can be such a horrible place because so many people went to making fun of this thing even before we knew whether the sub was found or not like there's a little tact that goes along with these things and all the memes that were negative i was just like come on let's i know give these people my the thing i took from it i love the rescue workers because they were Everyone very positive and they were like, countries. there's hope and that's all we have right yeah. now. And I loved that message. It was something we all heard over COVID a lot, yep. but they had that high level of hope and they were, they still went and did this every day, even though it was going to be tough. Yeah. And then part three that everybody's seen that really frustrated me is these guys with the sub had had a lot of warnings about the yes. structure of it and yes. they probably needed to update it. The whole I the whole running it with a joystick from a computer yeah. is fine. That actually makes sense. The it's that the structurally they had yeah. been warned of this. Yeah. So yeah. the other thing, people should be making fun more of was it Elon Musk's rocket that just recently blew up? No one died, thank God. Yeah. But well, Elon Musk and what's his face? Mark Zuckerberg are talking about like fighting each other. Oh, uh, I can't <laughs> wait. I will watch that. I will like do pay per view for that. Like, give these people something. I to do. want to watch like, this. Save the homeless. Like, save, like, there's millions of people who die every day from hunger and from drugs and, you know, cancer. Do, like, do something with that. Like, can you literally, like, get I, it? To and I'm life? sure that they all have their things that they say they do. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? Do more of it. Right, right. <laughs> and make so, it super public so we all know about it. Right. Because make a fucking all TikTok. we see is you guys doing this stuff. If there's any billionaires listening. <laughs> or if you're a billionaire, please let us know. I'd love to know if and you're a take care of more people. Exactly. Yeah. And take care of your billionaires. Okay. They need they have feelings too. But I 100% am extremely excited for the Zuckerberg Elon Musk fight. Yeah. Well, and before we move on, because again, I know we've all heard all of the things about the submarine, but I will... I will throw out a couple of conspiracy theories. Let's do the conspiracy theories. Okay, here and again. None of these, I don't get these from good sources. I literally hear from these from TikToks and from people on the internet. This is, <laughs> so take these all with the smallest <laughs> grain been, of salt. You have been warned. <laughs> with the smallest grain of salt. Um, but allegedly, one of the billionaires, you know, I was telling you this, like he just like a lot of those people were obviously very important, powerful people. They're billionaires. One of them was in Pakistan government. You know, it was like one of them had just been doing a lot of research on the South Pole, which apparently holds a lot of secrets about the world. Apparently, allegedly, one of the men um, had one of the scientists, I forget all their names, but had been doing research on um intellect uh aliens what's the word i'm looking for uh extraterrestrial extraterrestrial intelligence um so you know like they were men that maybe knew knew too much knew something and why they think this is because a lot of them were like there's this rumor going around that the navy heard a boom on sunday true they had gone you know, about an hour and 45 minutes down their journey, which it normally takes two hours to get to Titanic. So they're almost at Titanic and the Navy hears a huge boom and they're like, Oh, that was weird. But like, obviously you would think they would all be talking, but like, Hey, near this site, we're doing an, uh, you know, an uh, exploration and, you know, just be, keep your eye out. Or like, they didn't call the Navy and be like, Harry, did you hear anything? Because they all kind of suspected that. That's something because they knew the materials. None of the materials were really approved to go underwaters at this depth, especially the different types of material they were using. So there was a really high probability that there was going to be a leak and there was going to be an implosion. Well, haven't they done this before with this sub, though? Yes, but they said it was it like a lot of these scientists that are now coming out are like, well, 
it could be good the first couple runs, but eventually Over the material time, is going to wear down. Is gonna wear yeah, down. Yeah, that makes sense. So that was like, they were like, it might be good on the first, and then they're going to get cocky and say, oh, we've had five successful trips, or I think it was three. We've had three successful trips. Look at us. Who wants next? <laughs> three is a sample size. Yeah. Not and quite then, enough. And then, you know, and then, so that's, you know, why they're all like, yeah, we knew that that was going to happen. They were going to be successful a little bit until it just couldn't they take should it. should do that 50 times before they put a person in it. Right. So then why, again, did it take over 10 hours? I think it was like eight to 10 hours later that finally they were like, okay, they're missing. You know, the Ocean Gate people were finally like, okay, something's wrong. So why did it take that long? And why did the Navy not be like, hey, we heard this implosion and like give all this false hope that they're still out there spending all this money if they're like... You know, but I guess obviously you want proof. You want to be like, hey, let's, we need, you know, obviously you're going to still go to the bottom of the ocean and be like, where's the debris? Like, we got to prove that something did happen just in case. But it was still, you know, it's just interesting. It's just spooky. And, you know, I'm going to be like the other conspiracy theory theorists on the world, but it's like, it was such a crazy thing. Like, you remember hearing about it? These billionaires are at the bottom of the ocean. But billionaires are always doing crazy shit. And there was, you know, it's like, it felt like every news, like every, whether it was New York Post, CNN, like every news blogger or news site or everything was covering it. Everyone had it. And it's like, what are they, what's, what are they hiding? You know, what news? spooky stuff spooky 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 and that's your conspiracy corner what do you think james you think they're all out to get us conspiracy corner gonna be a regular thing maybe do you guys like it let me know let me know comment below if you like conspiracy corner so i think do i get to have do i get to have reasonable thinking human corner no after the follow-up yeah what what is your follow-up to that occam's razor the simplest answer is yes the simplest answer is usually right i'm gonna say that um and just because the navy heard it doesn't mean they had any idea what, what it was, was i know where I know. it is but or still, why you that think happened they would be like hey you know and again of course they're going to want to prove it and make sure but it's like how often know. do they hear things like that well that's the other question and all like with the banging sounds that they apparently heard like yeah. what was that is that you know again it's like they put out some information but then they don't explain certain things that makes you go it's probably because they don't know yeah it well, is two miles under the ocean Still spooky <laughs> stuff. And, you know, I was hearing that the Titanic is going to, like, almost completely disappear in the next 20 years. So that's why there's such this rush to try go and check go it see out. it. Yeah. Because it's going to completely fall apart. Yeah. No structure anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like, everything's like the there's, like, this really famous bathtub scene, the old captain's bathtub. Yeah. Completely gone. Like, there's so is it? much. I yeah. see. I didn't know that part about it. But that makes so, sense. It's under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> under a little bit of pressure so um yeah just crazy crazy story i mean couldn't literally pay me a bajillion dollars there's not enough xanax (laughs) or weed in the world that would make me i can't even like go in a small space like that even if we weren't going underwater even if we were just gonna stay on land in that little i would have to be front seat with the window (laughs) like i can't even ride in a car and rest up against it yeah i I just can't even imagine. I really, that just, it's crazy. People are crazy. But RIP, especially to the young kid that like probably was like dragged into this and was like, you know, has his whole life ahead of him. Um, All right. Anyways, to jump back around to weird show of the week. Not weird. And this one's not even weird. This one's just sad and depressing. So take care of Maya. This is a, sh- actually, it's a movie, technically. I think it's a documentary. It's one part on Netflix. And, you know, talk about the system failing us. Um, get your tissues out. Definitely, like, a trigger if you've, like, been undiagnosed by stuff in the medical community. Like, I had a friend that reached out and was like, that show was, or that, you know, was so triggering because I kind of went through something similar. And I think, I don't want to give it all away, but, um, you know, the school young young girl gets really really sick and basically the hospital um goes to child protective services and suspects that the mom is like making her sick 
So it's this whole thing of like the fight with the system and it's just uh, the girl ends up suffering. It's really honestly a sad, really sad story. It's not yeah, like I wouldn't give away much more than that. Yeah, but that's it. But it's and it happens a lot more like, you know, do some research on how often it happens. And it was yeah, there's a, there's a lot wrong with the medical system these days or the these, you know, just the system don't, in general. Don't watch this if you need to pick me up. Yeah. Yeah, don't watch me if you need to pick me up. I know. Um, but that, w- I mean, all of the TV shows lately have been bummers. Same with the shiny, happy people I watched. I was kind of like watching while I was trying to get work done. Um, because this is another story that's just so sad. If you ever watched um, 19 Kids and Counting. Did you hear about that show? Nope. On TLC. So it was about this religious family. I forget what religion it was. It's one of the, it's almost kind of similar story to um that priest that was um i don't know we watch like so many religious stories <laughs> they all like blend together um i know what i'm trying to you know think that of the really name popular of priest yeah, yeah, yeah. are but, you talking about hillsong yes in a sense like just how this you know can put you under the spell of like the man is the leader and the, you know very specific gender roles and how these women, you know, in this family were brainwashed. And this family, this show, 19 Kids Encountering, was one of the biggest shows on TLC back in the day. And it was crazy because there was 19 kids and they had this humongous house. And it was a crazy thing to watch, you know, because it's like, you know, where else would you see a family with that many kids? And they're all super happy. They all go to church together and they all work so well together. And it's like this well-oiled machine. Were they not really happy? <laughs> Spoiler alert. They weren't Sorry actually to ruin happy. That one. Yeah. They weren't actually happy. The oldest son, child pornography charges, multiple kids in the family are having mental health crisis. It's just another real picker upper, you know. If you Yeah, those are those are tough to watch and again so if you have i feel like it's hard for people to who are christians like i know it's with my dad is this shiny happy people or is this the tlc one still or shiny happy people shiny happy similar people to is that. the documentary about about Kids that and counting oh Sorry, that i just needed no but i probably wasn't yeah shiny happy people i passed out for family. a second like you were earlier yeah, literally. about 19 kids and counting and how Got it was like meant it. to be this happy family show turns out there's all these dark so secrets. shiny happy people yeah is the name of the show i think it's on prime um but again not not the uh not a happy show obviously even though title can be misleading um all right james how you doing great are you feeling okay I had to watch you pass out today. It was not I happy. know. Was that scary for you? Yes. Do you think I was going to die? No. James went and got me a lollipop. Actually, I was just going to say, you said you were going to get me one, and then you didn't get me a lollipop. I, I said, what flavor did you want? And, and then you, you just... were half passed out. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize it. <laughs> you just it. didn't get it Because then, well, you walked right by the jar, too. I didn't see it. I was, like, still I'll take seeing blame. stars. Yes. That was so crazy. I knew you were going down. I took your purse and your coffee before anyone I know, did anything. Crazy too. I know. I'm like, this is just this is so wild. It was like I like kind of like dreamt a little bit. That's why I was like, how long was I out for? Yeah. Because you I asked like, that, had like a little I bit really of a dream. What, then I knew what was going on. I didn't realize how out you were till you asked me. Yeah. And you said, Oh, how long was I out for? And I'm like, Oh wow, she was yeah, way like I out literally. Of it. You were still somewhat responsive. Like, so there was A part of you that, like, there was a responsive part that was conscious. Yeah. Yeah. And it made enough sense. You could tell you were real groggy, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. And then we got a bagel, so then I felt better. I know. What do we want to do for dinner tonight is the other question. We'll have to figure that out. (sighs) You know, there's nothing better than food. True. Food and animals. Literally, I was just like, I just want to get home and have a bagel and pet with my animals. Pet my animals. Um, all right. Anyways, crazy times, you guys. Um, we are going to get into our weird secret. Yay. Love the secrets. We have a couple good ones this week. As a reminder, you can also call in to the weird secrets hotline and speak by. And that's speak, S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E dot com slash weird and proud pod. 
you can leave up to a minute and 30 seconds and it's always anonymous. You literally just hit the link. I'll put it in the description of the podcast. It's also in the Instagram bio. So you can just click the link, hit record, send it off. And, um, there's a chance we'll read, we'll read it. We'll listen to it on air. Um, all right, James, are you ready prepared for our first? This one's a doozy. This one takes us all over. Here we go. Okay, this is one of my most embarrassing moments because of, you'll see. I saw this guy. We hooked up. He lived in a different town. Then he came to visit me for the weekend. And things were going great. First night, good. Second night, he started drinking. We get into this argument about privilege, like male privilege versus female. And he just thinks that men don't have more privilege than women. And I just get really upset with him. And um, Then it gets into like this whole argument about race and white privilege and I was like oh fuck um so he's like in this manic episode basically and he's like just stringing all these words together and like not really making sense and then he goes off about how he is like oppressed because he identifies as like questioning his sexuality so he says that he's like on the LGBTQ spectrum and he's just like very manic and just yelling at me. And so I kick him out of my house. I like throw his shit on the porch. And then he takes his spray paint, which he has in his car. I don't know why. And he spray paints the word questioning on my garage door. And then all these question marks on my sidewalk. And this is what makes it embarrassing is after that, he apologizes. And he, like, calms down. He's not manic anymore. He's back to, like, the night before, dude. And I totally forgive him, and I have sex with him. And then I just have to... People wonder why this spray paint is on my garage and my sidewalk. And I have to tell this story. And it's just very embarrassing that I let him back into my house after all of that. So that was a roller coaster. That was a lot. That was a lot. (laughs) Um, so basically this guy that you were seeing for the first time freaks out. You're talking about male versus female privilege, privilege. He freaks out, says he's a member of the LGBTQIA community. And then he starts going crazy. And then you kick him out of your house and then he goes and gets spray paint vandalizes vandalizes your house let's not use the word spray paints he vandalizes vandalizes your house. with question marks and then you let him back in and have sex with him is what you're saying i can tell that neither of these people have issues no They're very straight like no i'm kidding that was a really good story no, that and that amazing. had to be tough that to took share me, that, that took had to be places. hard to share because we that up, was we went down then and as I already made fun of you, I'm sorry about that. But I'll also say she seems very forgiving. You do. I know. You know what? Sometimes you have a bad night. Someone vandalizes your house. Forgiveness. You know, that's Jesus a good thing. forgave. And that's why he was Jesus. So you're kind of like Jesus. Think about it. Um, but I would maybe not let that man back in your house. Jesus definitely had male privilege. Definitely. He was literally a Nepo baby. He was the first Nepo baby. <laughs> do you remember what a Nepo baby means? No nepotism like you're born into like a rich family or like a famous family uh, so you like have nepotism like you're privileged that, yep <sighs> james it's hard to explain the gen z phrases to you every time you know you gotta keep up i gotta get you on the tiktok we gotta put you on tiktok for like an hour a day just so you can keep up with all the kids and what their lingo is please no please no <laughs> um all right thank you so much for that that was really a doozy that 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 was a tough story to share and thank you yes, for sharing that was sharing. really good but and also let us know like where you guys are at and that you're okay and that he hasn't <laughs> murdered you and i mean like for reals let us know if you're okay for reals i'm wondering the question marks i question I know, the question, question marks. right what were the question marks about maybe i don't know you just you know sometimes you don't ask questions um all right are you ready for the next one jams so I'm going to give you a two fur on this one. Um, when me and my sister were uh, kids, we got grounded um, and we were a year and a half 
age difference. So whenever we got in trouble, we get in trouble together. Everything we did was the same, not important to the story. Uh, but when we were grounded, we were told we can't leave the room. So we had a plastic Kool-Aid jug. So me and her peed in it for a solid like week and a half. And then when we weren't grounded anymore, we forgot about it and we hid it under my sister's bed. Well, I guess my bed too, because it was a bunk bed. And we we completely forgot about it. My mom, my mom found it like a month later. And well, we got grounded again. Uh, the second one was me, my sister, and my best friend uh, were really strange children. Um, so we would dare each other to do weird things. Well, we were all in a dare together to shit off my parents' roof. I couldn't do it. My best friend did it, and my sister did it. And the my friend's shit got stuck in the gutter. She ended up getting it out before my dad found it. But my sister's poop rolled off, so she slingshot it into my neighbor's yard. And they probably picked it up thinking it was dog shit. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I love... All right. Bye. <laughs> First off, the level of calls one and two here, yeah. these are phenomenal. A lot of detail. There's a lot of weird involved There's in these a calls. Lot of weird, and, and, and I'm I, very proud I of I applaud it. both callers because this is fantastic. Yeah. You ever shit off a roof? Have I purposely pooped off a roof? Where are you from, by the way? I want to know where this caller is from because that's a Wisconsin thing. It's very do. much a Midwest thing. What I caught a little Midwest shit vibe off in there. The roof? I'm trying to think. I know people. I've pooped in a pumpkin. I've told Why? that story. Yeah. Because we had some kids that were vandaling oh, their pumpkin, oh, 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 so oh. we pooped in it, and then they smashed a poop pumpkin. We won that battle. Yeah, but this did. story, I, the grounding, like mm. I, I do think of a little like, kind of a kidnapping type story that the kids can't go pee on their own. Well, that, I was gonna ask that too. I'm like, wait, so you can't even leave the room to pee? Like, a, are you okay? It's quite a grounding. Yeah. Are you all right? Please bark twice if you're in Milwaukee, Baxter. Yeah. Please, like, call us and let us know if that was like meant to, or you guys just did that for fun. Because me and my brother would pee like in Tupperware when we were grounded, just because, just to be like, yeah, fuck you. If you want me to ground, like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm pissing in here. I have never peed in. I peed in a bottle while driving because I didn't oh find a bathroom God. in time. That's about the extent of that. Yeah, I just like to pee in weird places. There is something about just like so you can empathize being with this a wild. One. Yeah, that's why I'm like honestly like a it, that seems like pretty normal. Then poop it off the roof. <laughs> I love it. Hey, you, sometimes like you got to entertain last yourself. Week, pooping off the tree. Do you want to really know what was going through my head as soon as he started talking? What I was I was really hoping that this is what he said. So I ended up hooking up with this girl the other week, and she got really upset with me because we were talking about male and female privilege. So I sprayed question mark. I spray painted question marks all over. Oh, for him! I was just hoping it was a related follow up call. Please, no one fake and do that. I know I don't want any fake calls out there. That would be. But that was going through my head. I was just waiting for him to get into that, so I missed the first part of the story because I'm like, please be the guy that spray painted question marks. Oh my god, that would be crazy, James. Uh, What are the chances of that? That's James's conspiracy corner right there yeah um but we we love a good poop those are poop both those calls back shit. to back thank you both for calling yeah that was pretty that, that was pretty amazing very very weird stories um all right we have one more before we before we end you ready prepared so i'm super irish super white i basically got a huge sunburn on my chest can't stop peeling the skin off i am the old creepy guy from austin powers gold member but my favorite part is when it's really quiet i'm home alone i peel it slowly it is a beautiful sound must try 10 out of 10 yeah she's not wrong She's eating her sunburned skin. Eating her sunburned skin. I do that. I, you've you've mentioned that before. It's delicious. <laughs> it's a, such a tasty treat, and I do know exactly what sound. Especially, I love peeling the skin on my on my um my shins and like the front of my legs because it's so thin. So it's like, it's really like a nice, beautiful, like taking like fresh. And I don't know. You you get upset at me because I don't wash my hands after I pee. Yeah, I feel like your skin is your skin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if you're in your skin, you're in your skin. But like if you're going to like a public bathroom, it's other people's pee. You know, like if it, it, here in the house, I would never expect you to wash your hands. No, I'm not gonna. It would be more. It's more of the fact that you. I wash my hands before I take my contacts out. 
That's great. Congratulations. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, but it's more of like, you know, if you're going to a public bathroom and it's like other people that aren't washing their hands, you know, like then you think of some, you know, it's more if you're home and you're in the comfort of your own juices and your own bodily eating your own skin. Well, I bite my nails is basically like eating my skin. That was a great call. We didn't thank her yet. Yes. We? Thank, thank you for calling you. on that one. No, thank you. That and, was a, um, a wonderful. That's, that's also very common of like people who do like. You know, picking the skin on your nails. That also is, it's very common. Everyone's just out here living the cannibal life. We're all just a bunch of cannibals. Eating boogers. Eating your skin. Eating your knees. It's a great life. Delicious. Maybe that's what we'll have for dinner. Maybe I'll cook up some of my skin. My finest shin skin. (laughs) Do you want some skin? They are putting a movie out about this does make me think of something what i heard that they are putting another murder type movie out that you will love based on ed gein do you know the name okay ed gein was he's one of our wonderful examples of the most horrific serial killers who are from wisconsin Mm. he was way before jeffrey dahmer and Mm. ed gein was actually the basis for the uh antagonist or the the bad guy in silence of the lambs yeah. buffalo bill who yeah. wears people's skins yeah, yeah, yeah. ed gein had like people's skins stretched all over his living room as lampshades he was killing people for i think and I, i'd have to look up Where ed gein this? again in wisconsin yeah this was in the 50s 40s 50s something like that is when he started apparently killed Weird. was a serial killer in wisconsin killed so just horrible but Speaking of eating skin, he was he was the basis for Silence of the Lambs, one of the most famous serial killer yeah, movies yeah, ever. Yeah. And is it a '90s movie? We might be have to put that on the list. Silence of the Lambs is phenomenal. oh, I thought that is Silence of the Lambs is phenomenal. And yeah. I think that there's actually another movie coming out about Ed Gein, and his stuff was super weird. There, there. I guess part of the reason why there always hasn't been as much about Ed Gein is he lived in the middle of the woods nowhere wisconsin which is Um, you've experienced nobody knows that much about him he didn't interact with people he just killed people and apparently he was if i remember correctly when i did see something about him he was nice kind of a member of community and nobody would have guessed that that's what he was like weird that's creepy back to eating skin crazy times well can't wait for that to come out another relaxing show to watch (laughs) another relaxing (laughs) another happy show. show Um, well, as a reminder, you can also call in to speak pipe at, oh wait, call up. I gave away your line. What? Um, are you mad at me? (laughs) My brain, my brain can only function at a certain level right now. Um, you can call into the weird secrets hotline at speak pipe, speak pipe, S P E A K P I P E dot com slash weird and proud pod. Make sure you call in. You can tell like when some people are in the car and sometimes they're good and it's, you know, at least we can hear you, but try and be in a quiet space and um, speak clearly. If you could, that would be fabulous. And try to keep it, you know, again, to like the minute 30 seconds. We'd love to hear at least also, we love to hear what state, like state of the country yeah. people are in yeah like there's it adds a little bit to the story if yeah. you can if you feel like that and if there's any good follow-ups if you, know, you if think you too many people would be hearing you or might know who you are you could just say northeast or midwest yeah 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 or southwest yeah yeah uh, but we love you guys so much don't forget to subscribe you guys are the best. wherever you're listening or watching this leave a thumbs up you could write a review i know it's a pain in the ass but if you're thinking of it if you're stopped in a spot right now just go on just hit the five star it means a lot it does a lot for helping get our podcast out there um and we just love you guys thank you so much for the support hope you have a great week and uh we'll see you next week love you weirdos love you weirdos